Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our admin who helped us with this translation. The translation reads like this. Hello, how are you? Can you post my own story? Is anonymous. My name is Temba, not a real name. So I live in Kempton Park here in South Africa, our country. For years, I have carried a secret that is tormenting me like day and night. I have no peace. I have no rest. Ladies and gentlemen, I am living in hell. I have brought myself hell on earth and I cannot carry this weight. It's like everywhere I am going. I am carrying a ton of bricks on my shoulders and I feel as if I cannot do it anymore. Just a couple of days ago, I told myself that it was far much better to go and sleep in the streets with the homeless people. Just when I got into town, that was when I got scared of getting robbed. When I was returning back home, that was when I laughed at myself because that was my intention of getting robbed or getting killed by the Nyaupe boys so that I can just die. But when I got into that environment, that was when I got scared of dying. I laughed a lot when I was driving back to Kempton Park. I have to confess that the darkness that I have been living in and the evil that I have done, I was led astray by a friend of mine, a man that I once trusted. He was the one who led me down this path. So it all started, it was in the year 2015, when I became close with this other friend of mine, whom I call Tinashe, not his real name. He was a man who was from Zim, a hustler who introduced, who introduced me to things that I never imagined that I was going to be involved in. Like when you hear people talking about rituals, it might be like a movie. But the day that you're going to get involved in them, like it would be funny when we were doing those rituals for the first time. It was like something that was just normal. But then when I started to see spiritual beings, that was when I realized that I was in trouble. The first thing that I saw was my father, like I had never seen my father before because they said that he died when I was still a young boy. I had a dream the first day that I was given this other small bottle. So I have this small bottle. So it used to be a Vaseline bottle, but it is an empty one. Inside there are some thorns and some charms that are in there. Those are the things that I use and those are the things that transform themselves and become like tokologies. So when I was given that, I then had a dream and I saw my father. My father was crying. When I walked to the place where he was, I said, why are you crying, dad? That was when I saw him holding that empty Vaseline bottle with the charms and he started crying and he said, what have you brought upon our family? And he cried even more and he disappeared. I woke up and I immediately called my friend and then he told me that he was going to give me some charms so that I would never be able to dream about my father again. I had another dream after I had been given the charms. My father, when he looked at me, I saw him vanishing and since that day, I've never had a dream about my ancestors or my father again. I was a man who was struggling financially, emotionally. This was after I had caught my wife cheating on me with my boss and we had a divorce. So emotionally, I was in that sorry stage where I just wanted to be okay financially. Spiritually, I was no longer connected to God because I was asking God why he had allowed that to happen in my marriage. Since me and my wife, we were devoted Christians. So this man, my friend, he seemed to have everything sorted. He had wealth. He had everything. The people respected him. He always had money. And when I asked him how, he finally opened up to me. He told me about a spiritual practice that he had learned from his family back in Zim. And he knew the children of those people that used to, um, to assist his own father in the rituals who had assisted him as well. But at that time, he said that the traditional healer was still alive when he also went to get his own charms. So it was a form of a ritualism like Ugutwala that could bring wealth and power, but it was going to require some sacrifice. I was not interested at first because it sounded extreme, extreme. I did not want to mess 
with things that I could not understand. But as my financial problems grew, that was when I kept on thinking about what my friends said. It was like his words kept echoing in my mind. One day when I was desperate, I asked him to take me to his country. And when we went to his country, it was easy peasy, nothing. We just got onto the bus and we traveled to his country. That was the day that I made the worst decision of my life. The moment that I left the Limpopo River behind, I knew that I had betrayed my own family. And he then took me to this other old man, a very powerful Sangoma in his village. And I was initiated into the world of rituals. And I was told that I had to create an altar in my home. So I was given some items that I had to include in my altar and some things that I had to buy in my country. So this was a place where I was going to channel the energy to perform the rituals that will be giving me wealth and money. So I was given some instructions and the altar was to be set in a small room. No one but me or my friend was supposed to enter into that room in my house. And in that room, there is only a wooden table with some symbols. But most of these things, they are very important to me. Then they came the part where I was told what I was supposed to do. This part, it still haunts me to this very day. So I was told that in order for these rituals to work, what I needed to do was that like him, I always thought that he was someone who just loved women because he's always with different women. But I did not even know that the reason as to why he always chose these young women in particular, those that are below the age of 30, it was because of his rituals. So he then told me that I had to bring women to my house and bringing women, I had to seduce them and make them feel comfortable. And when they are fast asleep, after our love making, like I make sure that I make love to a woman until she gets so tired that she fall fast asleep. And when she is asleep, then I take a underwear. I take that underwear and I go and I place it on the altar. Whilst I'll be waiting for the ritual to be completed. And after that, then I will take back their underwear. The first time that I did this, I had brought a young woman that I had dated when we were still at a technical college and this woman we contacted again on facebook and then i went and i picked her up after she had fallen fast asleep i took her underwear and i placed it on the altar i felt sick to my stomach but my friend had told me that i was not supposed to regret otherwise money was not going to come over time, he said that it would be easier, and sadly enough, it did. The more that I performed these rituals, it's like someone is desensitizing me, and I started seeing the results. Money was coming, and things in my life started moving. Good luck and good luck, but I did not even fully understand what was happening to these women that I was bringing to my home until this other lady called me. So I had brought this woman and after I had brought her, brought her to my home, then she fell ill. She called me and she told me that she had developed severe fi fibroids all of a sudden. And then this woman, she passed away. When she passed away, that was when I started to make a research and I saw that most of the women that I had brought to my home, eventually they all die. And now I know that I am responsible and I cannot stop it. I am too deep and I am even afraid of being attacked by these things that stay in that Vaseline bottle. And he warned, he warned me again that this type of rituals, you do not have to be a coward and to turn back. So, Brother Nashi, if I stop right now, I might lose everything. I don't want this life anymore. I don't want to become the monster that I am, always prowling at VIP clubs, picking up women, those that I can bring back home. And after bringing back home, then I slash them and after they would have fallen fast asleep, then I take their underwears and place them at my altar and they don't even know what will be happening to them. I have come to realize that this what we are doing, it is not nice. As for him, he is a man who is heartless. He can even pick up a woman whom he knows he wants to use for his rituals. But I am not that. I guess I am a coward.
Oh, dear listeners, right there was a message that was sent to me by one of our dear sister who gave us this translation to our dear brother. If you are listening, yes, indeed, you had taken this path that is filled with distraction. But here's some advice that might help you and hoping that you'll be able to break free from these chains. Try to to seek for spiritual deliverance. You need to find spiritual help immediately. Seek a pastor or any spiritual leader who understands the battle because this is a battle you are involved in a, in a war. So you need a pastor who understand the type of a battle that you are going to be facing and you need a pastor that can pray for your deliverance so that this bondage, because this kind of bondage, it is it is very deep. It is not something to play around with. But if you try to be sincere, if you try to be sincere when you are asking God for forgiveness, I believe that you can be set free. And also, as difficult as it might be, as scary as it is, I have spoken with some of those that are traditional healers who says that you do not have to destroy these things on your own because they might even attack you because these are spirits that are more powerful than you are. But I believe that if you have given your life to Christ, try to destroy the altar. Because this altar, it is in your home. It is like that physical symbol that connects you to the demons. So once you destroy it, it you are cutting ties uh, that are connected to these demons. It is going to be difficult, but I believe that it is necessary for your freedom. And confess, and you need to confess and cut all spiritual ties if you can with your friend make sure that you cut all ties with him break any connection that you might have with your friend or anyone who is involved in the rituals because to you right now those people they will be toxic and they will be having influence over you telling you uh, that you need to keep on doing this you will struggle to be free if you are connected to people who are still performing these rituals and you need uh, God's grace, you need to repent for God's grace is going to be available uh, to you 24-7 but you need to truly repent and to seek for his forgiveness. I tell you that it is not going to be an easy road but I believe that this is the only easy way for you to find peace in the end and you are not a coward. You coming here, it shows that you are not a coward but a brave man. Please let us try to speak with him in the comment section.